1971, the world's largest underground nuclear explosion took place. The Kanakin Test on Amchikta Island off the coast of Alaska. Now that might seem a good subject for a film on YouTube, but when I looked into it, the story is fascinating. What exactly were they doing in this massive underground bubble exploding a five megaton super weapon? It all started here at Staveley Road, Chiswick, London W4, on the 8th of September, 1944. This vengeance weapon, the V2, was fired against London. It's a ballistic missile, meaning it goes up into space and drops onto its target supersonically. Almost impossible to stop. And that's what they were testing in a hole in Alaska. This is the secret story of the Kanakin test. It all happened here at Amchikta Island, a tectonically unstable island in the Rat Island group of the Aleutian Islands southwest of Alaska. It's an island roughly of 116 square miles, about 42 miles long and four miles wide. It has some of the worst weather anywhere in the world. Amchikta was selected by the United States Atomic Energy Commission to be the site for underground detonations of nuclear test weapons. Three such tests were carried out. First, long shot, an 80 kiloton blast in 1965. Milro, a one megaton blast designed specifically not to test the bomb, but to test the island. It was vital that the island could take a large blast. People were seriously worried. This is a tectonic region with earthquakes causing tsunamis. There was a lot of opposition to using the Alaskan islands as an underground test site, but the Atomic Energy Commission needed to test something so unique, so big, and so dangerous that they couldn't test it at their Nevada test site. And that's Operation Kanakin in 1971. What they were testing was the warhead from a W-71 Spartan anti-ballistic missile. And that story goes right back to World War II. This is a V-1, a subsonic cruise missile. In fact, they were terribly ineffective. Britain and the Allies had radar, which they used to find, trace, and direct anti-aircraft weapons against the subsonic V-1s. But their real ace up their sleeve was this, the proximity fuse. This blew up near the V-1, taking it out of the sky. But when the deadly ballistic supersonic V-2 weapon came about, they couldn't stop it. So they came up with an audacious plan, Operation Crossbow. What you have to remember is that V-2s weren't launched from the island of Pinamunda in northern Germany but they were mobile and launched from Holland and Belgium and in France. 
the Allies needed to find and destroy these mobile V2 weapons. Brilliantly using stereoscopic photography flown bravely by Spitfire pilots, they spotted these strange weapons hiding in French woods or even downtown in The Hague. Allied command knew the only way to stop a V2 ballistic missile was to destroy it on the ground before it took off. There was no way to stop it in the air. And that was mainly because the targeting solution, the computing power didn't exist to work out where it was gonna be in three-dimensional space. You can't fire at it because you don't know where it is. There was nothing around at the time that could work out how to hit the incoming missile. After World War II, the Cold War and intercontinental ballistic missiles posed the same problem. How could you shoot one down once it's been fired? Of course, computing technology got immensely powerful. Now we can trace and track and work out a firing solution to actually hit an incoming ballistic missile. But what happens if you don't quite hit it? Wouldn't it be brilliant if you could destroy an incoming missile with a near miss? And that was the whole idea of what they were testing in a large hole in Alaska, the Kanakin test. This is a very rare photograph of a W-71 Spartan missile being lowered into a deep underground circular dome. The W-71 warhead is unlike any other nuclear bomb. It's very big, five megatons. Remember, Hiroshima was 1.5 kilotons. Megatons is a power above that. But the W-71 warhead lowered into a hole on Rat Island, Alaska, did something else. It's an X-ray ionizing weapon. Well, you might well ask, what's one of them when it's at home? Well, it's a way of destroying an incoming missile by not quite hitting it. It was soon discovered after the Trinity test that atomic bombs produce a wave, a pulse of X-rays, which destroy everything. Here's a classic picture of the Indian rope trick. These guy wires holding up the atomic bomb tower were being vaporized by X-rays and gamma rays. So, going back to V1s and the proximity fuse, wouldn't it be a good idea to have an atomic bomb that could nearly hit an incoming ballistic missile, but to have a wide area of destruction? And that's what they were testing in Alaska. First of all, they did a test to check the island wasn't going to be destroyed in an earthquake. That was Operation Longshot. Then they fired this, Operation Milro, really again to test the island against seismic destruction and tsunami waves being generated. But it was all leading up to the 6th of November 1971, when Operation Kanakin exploded in this spherical chamber lined with gamma and X-ray detectors to work out how an anti-ballistic missile warhead would actually work. So sadly, when 22 Londoners died in the leafy suburb of Chiswick in London W4, it directly led 
to the world's largest underground nuclear test of a gamma X-ray burst anti-ballistic missile test. Operation Kanakin. The truth is now out there. Thank <laughs> you.